everybody. Um, today I'm going to make some butternut squash soup. Um, I I know soup season's really pretty much over right now, but uh, we had a blizzard yesterday, so today it's pretty chilly, and uh, I thought it'd be kind of fun to see what I could do with my instant pot. Uh, normally, I'll take the butternut squash and roast it in the oven, but I'm just trying to figure out a way, see if I could maybe cut a couple of steps out of that, but yet still get that roasted flavor that you get from a butternut squash. So what I decided to do was to go ahead and just uh, put it in the Instant Pot and then uh, maybe brown it or saute it while I um, uh, get the bacon cooked and things like that. So don't be afraid to wing it. I've made this, I've made it before a few times, but I'm not really following a particular recipe. That's kind of typically how I tend to do things anyway, is I just uh, look up something that sounds good and then uh, just bring it from there. So don't be afraid to try that yourself. So what I'm just going to do is put it in a few chunky sections and then just cook it part of the way. Um, I may put it in there a couple of times. We'll see. Um, I know some people will roast a, or not roast, but steam or instant pot a um, spaghetti squash without even taking the seeds out, but for some reason I don't know if I can bring myself to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and scrape them out. I don't have to do it later. It's not that hard. But I understand needing to cut the time out, you know, to try to hurry up and get stuff done because, you know, people are hungry and some people use this to save time instead of just, uh, you know, for their love of cooking, which I kind of go back and forth myself. Uh, I like to cook, but I don't want to have to do it every day. And this week, I'm... I'm going to just use one small butternut squash. Normally I use a larger one or two of them, but since it's just me, I'm just going to uh, kind of give you, a, you know, what I'm doing. So I'm using one small butternut squash and I cut it into a few chunks. And I think I'm at high altitude too, I'm at 6,800 feet. So I think I'm going to do it for about 15 minutes and see what that looks like. On manual high pressure. And then I'll come back and let you know. We'll see what we get from there. Well, while that is the uh, butternut squash is cooking, I went ahead and I've got my ingredients ready. I've got two slices of bacon chopped up, about a half cup of onion, some garlic, some sage, black pepper, and a little bit of salt. Not too much because we've got the bacon here. Um, two cups of chicken stock, which I had left over from something else I made. And this is some cream for to finish it off with. Um, normally, it, uh, you'd probably use uh, like uh, any kind of cream that you like that's dairy but I have a dairy allergy so I'm going to use coconut cream and what I did was I opened a can of coconut milk that I kept in the fridge and then I just scooped off the about a half cup of the top and the rest of the can I'll just use in a smoothie or something well, I'll be back when the uh, butternut squash finishes. I have just a few more minutes left of uh, the butternut squash cooking, but it's really nice to be able to... I have this great view of Pike's Peak from my kitchen and dining area, so it's kind of fun to sit there and look at that. I'm After living in Houston for 18 years, I really miss the mountains, so 
uh, we've been enjoying it here in Colorado Springs. Anyway, uh, I'll be back in a second. And now for a quick release. Be very careful when you release it. Okay, so now the squash has finished and I've done a quick release. It takes a little longer at higher altitude. It took about two minutes. Um, and I don't really, and it's nice and tender. So now I'm gonna peel it and chop it into smaller chunks. And then uh, we'll start the second part, that, uh, part of the process. And a little trick I learned is using rubber gloves is kind of helpful when you're in a hurry and you're wanting to handle something hot. But this should peel pretty easily. Uh, maybe next time I'll peel it again, peel it ahead of time, but um, it's just, it doesn't take that much time and I don't, I guess, you know, you have to wear gloves when you're peeling the squash like this when it's raw because it's, there's enzymes in the skin that help it heal itself and it's kind of a protective barrier so um, it tends to not feel so great on my hands. Maybe some of you have had have better tips on how to do this and like I said I may not do it this way again. So 15 minutes was sufficient so I would say if you are at sea level I would probably just cook this for about 10 minutes and uh, I think because I cut it into chunks it's a little bit quicker. Um, I think if you cooked a couple of them chopped up it would probably be about the same amount of time but you can experiment with that yourself. This is smelling really good. I'm now getting the smell of both the squash and the bacon, so it's just lovely. I think at this point I'm going to go ahead and 
add the garlic. It's about a clove is what I put in here. So if you were doubling it or you wanted more, then you would just, of course, use more. Yeah, this is starting to... I'm going to add some seasoning, my seasonings that I'd already measured out, some sage, black pepper, and just a little bit of salt. This bacon has salt in it, so I don't really need to do that. Okay, I'm starting to smell the sage. I kind of wanted to wake up those spices a little bit before I did the deglazing. So I'm going to pour a little bit of chicken broth, the stock, which is my chicken, chicken stock. And then I'm going to scrape the bits again with a I don't have any wooden spoons. Um, a lot of recipe, uh, Instant Pot recipes say use a wooden spoon. This is a really stiff uh, turner, so that does a trick for me. And you can see this getting it off pretty good. So now I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of this. And I think, see this is just a really small recipe. So what I think I'll do is two cups was about enough for this amount, so I think I'm going to go ahead and put that on there, and then I'm going to, you could have saved the liquid from the, you could have saved the liquid from the, um, cooking the squash if you wanted. Need a little bit more here and there. I washed the lid. Sorry about that. Cancel. It doesn't like that. I had water in the lid. So we all make mistakes, but at least the inner pot's in there. Oh, yeah, and don't touch the inner pot. It's not. Okay. So I'm going to put it in the ceiling section and I'm going to put it on, you could do manual if you want, but I think I'm just going to do soup and leave it on the 20 minute feature because, or option, I mean I could adjust it and do more, but um, since everything's mostly cooked, I'm just going to put it on the 20 minutes because I think that'll be sufficient and then we'll be back. Okay, well now it's finished and it's been naturally releasing for seven minutes. Normally you want to completely release a soup uh, naturally because if you don't, it'll, it typically gets really spewy and makes a lot of watery mess and can clog your valve. But it's been sitting here for a few minutes so I'm going to go ahead and release it. There wasn't a lot of soup in there, so I'm not really too concerned about how long it needs. The, uh, the, the fuller your pot is, the closer it is to the valve, so I'm sure that makes sense. Plus it's still boiling under there because it's under pressure. Yes, I'm a little impatient. Well, let me not set this here. I'm gonna, now it's time to finish the soup. It's pretty, it's cooked all the way. Uh, 
I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. And now what I want to do is go ahead and blend it to get it all. I have it on the speed one to kind of get it all emulsified and chopped up. I don't particularly enjoy the chunks of the squash. I kind of want it all creamy and smooth. Again, you would, if you use two or, you know, uh, butternut squash, you're going to get a lot more soup. But this is just going to be for me in Since I use that towel to steam, I'm not going to use that again for dishes or anything. Okay, so now what I want to do is um, go ahead and add my cream. It just helps with the richness. You could leave it out, of course, if you wish. And you can tell that I put a lot of sage in it, so it kind of has a a little bit greener hue, so I might not have needed quite so much sage. Uh, my experience, a lot of... Let me go ahead and put this on saute again. The, um, a lot of times the Instant Pot kind of... I mean, it, it does really good at blending all the flavors, and so sometimes you don't get the taste of everything right there. I probably could have used a little bit extra. You can thicken this up if you want. I don't typically, it doesn't usually need it. So I probably really needed just more squash in this or less broth, but because it's a little bit thinner than I normally see. But, um, but this will work. I guess I don't really need the saute because we're really just finishing it. So now I want to, what I want to do is I want to taste it and see what kind of seasonings I need to do. Um, looks like I could use just a little bit of salt, not a lot, and a little bit of pepper. I don't think I would double the bacon because I think it, the you'll have plenty of grease if you, um, no matter for the whole pot. So this is a little bit strong on the bacon grease. Or you could do the same amount of bacon or double the bacon and just drain off the, some of the grease. That would work too. little bit too much sage so I would probably do a teaspoon of sage next time for this amount uh, I guess if you were going to uh, quantify it for every quart of chicken broth you're going to use I would say probably a, a teaspoon to two teaspoons of sage um, I only use two cups of broth and I think I put a teaspoon and a half this is thickening up a little bit. I put it on saute. 
okay. So I definitely think that next time I would probably just go ahead and peel the squash first, then cook it, then brown it. I mean, or I could just roast it. If I have the oven on, I'll roast it, but I didn't want to heat up the whole entire house. Let's see what I got here now. Oh yeah, that's good. So that's what I would do next time. And I think that the flavor profile will be a little bit different. So let's go ahead and finish this off with So sprinkle a little bacon on here. See it's a little thin, otherwise it normally sort of stands on top of it. And then I like some fresh ground pepper. Let's see what we have. It did thicken up a little bit. too bad. I think though my favorite way is to roast the chicken or the chicken. I could put chicken in there couldn't I? Uh, is to roast it in the oven. See you next time.